starting a project in which we are combining all the information of our sensors in order to create a digital twin of the structure or of the building that we are monitoring. Can you explain what a digital twin is? The digital twin is the last of the last layer of a very complex process in which you start from the hardware or the physical world uh, where you uh, incorporate the sensors and then you step up another layer in which you have the actual data that you have to process and then step up another layer in which you process the data and then you get the information and finally you have the digital twin which is all this information represented into a way that is easy to understand, simple to visualize. What do you say to people who might have a statement, AR is dead? Well, it's immersion. <laughs> it's not dead at all. Like you can see the trends for the web AR, for example. You can see the integrations with other platforms. So that is a green flag that the industry is growing. And you can see the new use cases like Disney just uh, launched the AR for their one of their movies. And I think it's it's the live proof that it's not dead at all. I understand those people who, who cannot see the application for the metaverse in their everyday routine. And we, as an industry representation, we have to prove them that they can use that, that they can bring the value to their lives and workspaces and everything. As you may know, the glasses available in the market are either too bulky to be used every day, or the more portable ones, they fail to provide that truly immersive experience. Uh, that's why we develop a highly portable device, distinguishable from regular or conventional glasses, uh, that provides 150 degrees of field of view. This thanks to our proprietary optics uh, technology that allows this huge immersive experience in, in a highly compact device. You said 150 degrees. How does that compare to other standards? Of course. Uh, for example, HoloLens from Microsoft, it's 50 degrees of field of view. It's like a floating window. A square, small, full floating window. Uh, VR headsets such as MetaQuest 2 is 90 degrees of field of view. Uh, MetaQuest Pro is 110, so it's more than even VR headsets, but with a pair of conventional glasses with a two millimeter thick lens. How are you able to do that better than all these giant companies? Uh, because of our. What is your secret? Uh, this is our secret source, our optical system that it's what allows this. Uh, huge experience and uh, yeah we are protecting it very well. <laughs> so first of all we are from the University from Girona, uh, it's a small little city here in Catalonia and we developed this, well we got this tool, this, in the, this kind of solution that is Drinkia, Drinkia, the, there is a set of solutions to companies that produce water. Well basically a digital solution that works uh, and has a performance similar to their reality. So here we are talking about drinking water. Uh, it's kind of easy to understand that the drinking water, the, the water that the human people uh, we are consuming uh, must, must, be, uh, uh, must be safe to the, its consume. So I think that before testing anything in real life with some, something that is usual as the drinking water, it's better to test it on a digital digital twin in this case. VR is basically a no-code platform that anybody can use to create applications within the indoor navigation sector. And we recently also developed something which are called workflows, which is part of a more industrial suit where you know manufacturing environments can use the solution. So we are using many kinds of we are integrated multiple 3D cameras over the years. We have Navis, we have Matterport, and we are using also Leica scanners. And recently we also integrated LiDAR for like smaller areas or machinery. Well, what we need to focus on right now is AR glasses actually because you know we are mobile based. So everybody is requiring that not, not you don't have to hold the mobile with one hand in order to receive all the instru work instructions, for example. So what we are trying to do is now use AR glasses to deliver all our content. So that's like the main idea what we are focusing this year. Implementing security frameworks is also an option. And then we are looking at going slowly to cloud computing because currently all of our computing is happening on the phone locally. And could you tell me why this works so much better in education compared to other fields. Being immersive in learning, why, why does that work? It works because being at the center of a highly realistic experience and being yourself the one that makes the decision that affects the outcomes of, of such situations uh, provides the user with four times more retention of the knowledge that you are teaching training 
than traditional learning experiences. Because the way that humans learn is by doing things, by making things, by being in situations like acting, making decisions, making mistakes. And this is the way that, le that humans learn the most. So being able to use virtual reality headset to provide these situations to users uh, in contrast with having to wait for these situations to happen in your everyday life uh, gives you a lot of added value. Oh, okay, this calls ARPDR. It means AR technology plus encyclopedia. So it means we combine the great aspects of paper books and also digital content. So like this, if I put this marker on and gently moving it, they are still following us. So that's why we call this AR interactive book, not just AR books. AR animation and still interact with myself with this through this AR markers. And the last page is one of the teacher's favorite because a kids who read only this paper book, they can they don't see how they look like when they are alive. But with ARPDA, with this magic magnifying marker, they can see how they look like when they are alive and actually introduce themselves like this and some dinosaurs poops and also some egg-laying dinosaurs animations. It enhances the uh, habits of reading. Reading habits, enhance reading habits and growing reading habits because actually most of kids don't like reading read nowadays. So first they can have some interest in a book with this augmented reality. But it's more fun than just the text and paper. Onirix is a platform, an AR platform, a SaaS software as a service, where the main goal is basically to create augmented reality experiences in an easy and intuitive way. With a drag and drop technique, you dra drag and drop assets in a grill, and from there you start playing with those assets. These assets could be video, audio, 3D models, uh, holograms. The, basically, there are two types of projects. You can create image tracking and surface tracking. Obviously, uh, image tracking, you launch the AR experience through an image, which is the marker, and once you point at the image, it's the trigger, and Onirix launch the AR experience assigned to it. Meanwhile, surface tracking is that you don't need an image to launch that image. Directly you drop the AR experience in a surface. Could be for, a, let's say, a 3D model of a bike. Web AR, it means that we launch all these web uh, augmented reality experiences without an app in the browser of your device. So it reduces uh, friction. You don't need to download an app to enjoy the uh, uh, experiences we create. Sometimes people, oh, I don't want to download an app because I don't have space in my mobile at this moment or I don't have time to download it. So basically you launch, you trigger that experience and you drop it and you can see it through the browser of your device. Safari, Google Chrome, all, 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 all browsers is compatible with, with Onirix. Everything, everything this year is going down, but not because they are, because the inflation, the international situation, massive layouts in, in big companies, but because previously they were hiring a lot, maybe a bubble. Uh, but no, in fact, uh, we are detecting more like a increase of awareness about what, what is AR and the uses of AR in business. Before, you almost have to educate people what is AR. Now everybody at least comes to you knowing what, what is AR. Sometimes they come, uh, mix it with virtual reality, VR, AR, but and every time we see more and more companies are considering AR for marketing and advertising in the industries, for, for education to employees, uh, there are many uses.